Abraham Harold Maslow. You might have heard that name before, Maslow. Show of hands, have you ever heard of what is called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs? If you raised your hand, then congrats! But you probably know nothing about the man who came up with this amazing pyramid. To start things off, Abraham Harold Maslow came from a family of Jewish immigrants from Russia. Maslow was born April 1, 1908 in Brooklyn, New York, and made his final resting place in California on June 8, 1970 due to a heart attack. Maslow went to law school and ended up not only getting a BA, but also an MA, PhD, and became a psychology department chairman. The majority of us can only hope to graduate and have a noteworthy job, let alone become a chairman, or woman, of something. Maslow was interested in the optimism of an inclusive theory of human motivation, which is what spawned his idea of the pyramid itself. He focused on the positive side of mental health, as well as the human potential, self-actualization, to be all you can be. Sounds like the army slogan, huh? Maslow was influenced by Max Werthermeyer and Ruth Benedict. Werthermeyer was interested in the study of perception, while Benedict is regarded as one of the pioneers of cultural anthropology. After all of Maslow's great accomplishments, he became a professor at Brooklyn College in New York. While he was there, he established the American Association of Humanistic Psychology. He became very interested in psychology and began to write about it. He published multiple books. One of the more famous books was Religions, Values, and Peak Experiences. After his writings were published, he was elected American Humanist Association Humanist of the Year, one of his favorite accomplishments. The creation of the theory started with meeting several other scientists. At the University of Wisconsin, as I stated earlier, Maslow became very interested in psychology. He spent time working with Harry Harlow, who was famous for his experience with baby monkeys and the attachment behavior. After he received his master's and PhD, he became interested in learning about human sexuality. Reported by George Borey in Maslow's biography, Maslow served as the chair of the psychology department at Brandeis from 1951 to 1969. While there, he met Kurt Goldstein, who had originated the idea of self-actualization in his famous book, The Organism. It was also here that he began his crusade for a humanistic psychology, something ultimately much more important to him than his own theorizing. One of the simpler examples I found to really help describe how the theory works is about thirst and hunger. George Borey says it like this, if you are hungry and thirsty, you will tend to try to take care of the thirst first. After all, you can go without food for weeks, but you can only do so much without water. Thirst is a stronger need than hunger. Likewise, if you are very, very thirsty, but someone has put a chokehold on you and you can't breathe, which is more important? The need to breathe, of course. On the other hand, sex is less powerful than any of these. Let's face it, you won't die if you don't get it. So now we introduce Maslow's Pyramid of Needs. I'm assuming that most of you have heard of it. You have your five basic levels. Physiological needs, safety, love and belonging, esteem, and self-actualization. Fancy words for what, when you get down to it, is fairly straightforward. You start out with your most obvious needs, the physiological ones. Basically, the ones that, as living organisms, we need to dot dot dot, you got it, live. You have your food, water, oxygen, shelter, excretion, regulation of bodily functions, pretty much. He throws sex in there, too, and there's been a good deal of debate on whether or not that's actually a need, insert quotation marks. Apparently, it has something to do with the continuation of the species, but that's not really the point. This level is the most basic because, if you don't have it, you're really not worrying about all the other ones, for obvious reasons. The next need is the safety level, and beyond the obvious, security of body, one has all the things that affect our peace of mind. Safety of family is generally pretty high on the list of worries, as is health, property, resources, employment, and the big one, morality. This is the one that can mess with your head because worry is a powerful crippler of persons. If you don't know that you or your loved ones are safe, it really puts a damper on all else. This level is also a very motivating one. If we didn't need money to buy food and other shiny things, how many of us would actually go to work or school every day? Show of hands. Spoiler alert, for those of you who raised your hand, that has something to do with the top two levels. The third level is the love and belonging one, the one you get all the warm fuzzies about. The need for community and family is a very deep-rooted one. 
chock full of the instinctual gather for safety, as well as the make a lasting connection with other humans, so this all means something neat. This is obviously the most emotional of the needs, so the lack of these elements affect us on a much more passionate level. Without them, many will find themselves lonely, depressed, and anxious. Not a good place to be. After that, we get to the esteem level. Self-esteem, confidence, achievement, respect of others, respect by others. All pretty important stuff. This is the level of the well-adjusted person. He or she has filled all the physical, intellectual, and emotional needs, and now they can work on themselves. Creating a better person, if you will. This one pushes you to do bigger, better things with yourself. Be the first one in your family to go to college. Get an outfit that just makes you feel good about how you look. Find a person you can have a good debate with, and agree to disagree. Feelings of inferiority are the result of a deficit of these aspects. The last and final level, the self-actualization level, Maslow describes as what a man can be, he must be. Fun fact, Maslow describes all the lower levels as the D needs, the deficiency needs. They are due to a lack of something. This level, however, contains the B needs, the being needs. With them, we achieve our full potential, he says. Creativity, spontaneity, morality, problem-solving, lack of prejudice, and acceptance of facts fill this level. This is the desire to be everything we can be. It's all about potential here. Today, if you search Maslow's hierarchy, we will get many different hierarchies like this one, with the five basic needs including psychological safety, love and belonging, esteem, and self-actualization or like today's hierarchy, which now includes cognitive, aesthetic, and transcendence needs. Cognitive needs include knowledge, meaning, and self-awareness. Aesthetic needs are beauty, balance, and form. And transcendence is helping others to self-actualize. Now let's take a look at how those basic needs are met today. For cognitive needs, it is striking that many, if not most, characteristics of self-actualizers listed by Maslow's hierarchy are cognitive. For example, accurate perception, creative problem solving, effective decision making, and high capacity for learning. Now let's move on to aesthetic needs. Beauty, well-being, and the appearance of youthfulness are now considered by our society to be important needs that require satisfaction. It may be a combination of the patient's position on Maslow's hierarchy and the value society places on appearance that ultimately leads him or her to make a positive decision in reference to aesthetic dental treatment. Today, using hydrogen peroxide or baking soda to lighten teeth is becoming a standard procedure in dentist's offices. The true rewards of aesthetic motivation are evident in the smiling faces of patients every day. The rewards won by making people feel better about themselves go far beyond economics. As clinicians strive to educate patients to achieve an enhanced level of aesthetic awareness, they may, in fact, be aiding them on their gradual climb to self-actualization. Lastly, in Maslow's hierarchy is self-transcendence. Self-transcendence in Maslow's hierarchy allows for a better understanding of the meaning of life worldview dimension. Adding self-transcendence into Maslow's theory helps psychology understand how different people and cultures interpret the meaning of life. Adding self-transcendence to the hierarchy can also give us a better connection of psychology of religion and spirituality to the theory in personality and social psychology. This would help us to create a more cultural psychology. If we add self-transcendence into Maslow's hierarchy of needs, then that gives us a theoretical tool to understanding human personality and behavior. Along with Maslow's hierarchy today is how it is used today to meet the unmet needs of our generation, the millennials. Millennials are most of us, the children of the baby boomers generation from the years 1980 to 2000. Our generation is also known as the me generation, who then produced the me 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 generation, whose selfishness technology has only gotten worse. Millennials have less civic engagement and lower political participation than any previous group, and they got this way partly because in the 1970s people wanted to improve kids' chances of success by instilling self-esteem. 
Millennials have the highest likelihood of having unmet expectations and the lowest levels of satisfaction with their careers. This is a crisis of unmet expectations which falls under Maslow's hierarchy of needs and makes it clear that a company can't just provide money anymore but also has to deliver self-actualization. Now companies are starting to adjust not just to millennials' habits but also to their atmospheric expectations to meet the needs of Maslow's hierarchy.